Hey guys, I wanted to post another video on how to read the psychometric chart. I feel like uh, another example is helpful, especially when you're first getting into understanding the psychometric charts and the properties and the information that it provides you. So this is going to be an example of uh, finding properties based on the humidification day at the DF or at the McKinney Airport. So that's it's at McKinney, Texas Airport is where I'm getting my ASHRAE information, my design day information. I'm looking at the humidification day. And I'll use this information in another example uh, to size a humidifier. Okay, so we have a humidification day, and I'm going to use the 99.6% day. Um, that just means how often or how likely are you going to experience this day. It's going to be like 0.4% of the entire year you're going to experience this humidification instance, and that gives us a dew point of 9.1. And it also gives us a dry bulb temperature of 27.7. Again, I got this from ASHRAE. You can get it from the 2021 ASHRAE Handbook Fundamentals. Okay, so then what does this information give us? Let's go ahead and plot it. So about 27 is going to be here. Your dry bulb is on your x-axis. You have 25, 26, 27. It's about 27.7, so we'll do let's say 28 right there at that dot, uh, 9.1 is going to be our dew point. That's going to be way off of our sheet. So in this instance, I like to try to follow this curve. Sometimes you can find curves where it goes, it continues, um, but here for a nine dew point, this curve only goes to 20. If it continues, let's say right here is about 15, right here is about, if I'm continuing this, and maybe I'm a little, it actually levels out about right here at this point. So I'm going to say this is going to be my worst case uh, dew point at this temperature, so where that intersects, it goes directly across until I hit 28-ish. It's going to be that point, and that is my outside air condition on my humidification day. That gives us about a relative humidity, about 35. Um, and then if we go all the way directly across to the right until we get to our grains, it's going to give us about eight grains of moisture. You can see right here on our Y axis, we have the amount of moisture, either in grains of moisture per pound of dry air or pounds of moisture per pound of dry air. I like using grains because it's a little easier to read on this graph. Uh, the conversion unit between the two is 7,000 grains equals one pound of moisture. So uh, just something to know. And then we also, we can get our wet bulb. Again, it just goes along this line. That wet bulb's gonna be about 25, or 2021. 20, we have a wet bulb of about 21. When you get down in these really cold regions, um, everything kind of mushes together, so to speak. Uh, and it's okay to not be very precise in what you're doing. When humidification day, you're looking for a point that's low on your amount of moisture content in the air. Um, 
that's going to give you how much moisture you need to achieve a relative humidity that's required in the space. Some relative humidity space requirements are between 30% and 60%. Um, so if let's say you have an outside air here and you're directly heating that up. If you're heating it up, it goes directly right on the graph. Um, and let's say you get to 70 degrees, you're sitting right here at 10% relative humidity, and you're going to need to add moisture in order to get it between 30 and 60% relative humidity. Um, and, and we'll talk more about that. I just kind of wanted to discuss how to plot an outside air point or a, any type of condition point that's really cold on the psychometric chart. Um, I would also, I think it's a good idea to mark down your volume, your specific volume, and that right here, it's noted on these lines, right there, and at this point, that's, so that's 12.5 right here, it'll be 12 around here, so I'm going to say 12.5 three cubic foot per pound of dry air. Okay, and that's all in degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit. So there's some properties that we're gonna be using when we size uh, our humidification load. If you have any comments, questions, uh, please let me know. Again, this is a psychometric chart for standard conditions at sea level. If you were trying to size or design for a location that's high elevations, you would want to use a different psych chart. So keep that in mind when you're plotting your points and reading the psychometrics. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and stay tuned. If you like this content, subscribe. Thanks for learning with me.